Justice of the Supreme Court to come and address you. something called Advocates Africa. Uh, class form is a, a chapter of uh, Advocates Africa, Christian Lawyers Association of Nigeria, uh, our biggest chapter. So they were hosting us uh, that time and I went with about uh, six other people and uh, at that time I don't know about the reputation of Nigeria worldwide now but at that time there was this uh, scheme called 49 or something 419 419 that one so uh, it was so it was so rampant that is the thing people knew about nigeria so we go and uh, people are saying uh, will we be safe in nigeria i said nigerians are our brothers and sisters uh, if we are not safe then where will we be safe so we go and we get to the airport now we need to get a vehicle to take us to where we are going to stay uh, Echo Lodge, Echo, Echo Lodge. Hotel. Echo Hotel. Hotel, yeah, that's where we are staying. So, as we are exiting in a, in a taxi kind of a van, we see some people running after us. And we say, okay, now travel has started. And uh, they stop us and we say, what's happening? And they say, where you were standing, uh, there were some two bags left behind. Do they belong to any of you? And uh, two of the students had left bags behind. And uh, these Nigerian brothers had picked them and ran after the car and delivered the, delivered the bags. So that was a great uh, welcome. And of course, I was telling the people in the taxi that you see, uh, I'm glad this has happened because now my people are at rest. They know that uh, Nigerians are exemplary. Even, uh, in some of the most uh, trusted places, you will never have this happen. Mm -hmm. So they told me one thing which uh, I, I found very interesting. They said, you know, the bad guys who give Nigeria a bad name are the ones out there. <laughs> now for us who stay, they are the good people. <laughs> but uh, it, it helps to know that, uh, you know, you cannot uh, brush people with one brush and judge and so on. Each one needs to be given an opportunity and you judge them after you have encountered them. Um, I'm glad to come here and uh, talk to you. Uh, basically, I see my friends, uh, Sozi, Peterson and Phoebe, good to see you. They are my neighbors where we stay in the city. Our children went to school together. They have had luck. One of theirs has gotten married. Mine are still delaying. I don't know. So, uh, you give me some tips. <laughs> and uh, my friends who help us at the altar here, Bishop Rere, Bishop Deo, Bishop Frank, is so Bishop uh, or Reverend and Pastor. I mix up the names. Bishop and so. Yes, but I'm busy. They are all here. But uh, I will tell you a bit of my journey starting uh, with the fact that. Uh, I, I was raised in an Anglican home, and uh, then uh, later when I went to senior one, I, uh, I accepted the Lord in a deliverance church, it's a Pentecostal church. The preacher was preaching from Revelation 3.20, and I walked to the front. I was a shy kid, but that time I felt I needed to walk and accept, and I did. And then uh, I wanted to run away from the Lord, but I went to a school where a lot of people were in a fellowship called Ibazukfu, 
Uh, this is the most strict uh, fellowship in the country, I think, <laughs> responsible for the East African revival. Uh, we had to keep short hair, and boys sit this side, girls this side, and so on. Yes, very, very strict. So I was with them for six years, then I kind of got a bit tired, and I wanted to, to go back to some kind of freedom. Wow. Uh, uh, yes, in inverted commas. Uh, but anyway, eventually the guy who had led me there, I, I thought I was accountable. So I told him, you know, I'm fed up of this thing. There are too, too many rules. I feel like my life is oppressed. So he said, uh, don't worry, I reached the same uh, conclusion. So before you go, before you give up on God, you need to come and try this other fellowship. So he took me to a Baptist church. And uh, there was so much difference between the two. I, uh, I kind of said, no, I need to keep coming here and learning a few things. So that's how I, uh, I got stuck at the Baptist church. That's where I go when I'm in Kampala. Uh, just to tell you that that's where I found my wife, who herself had come from a, a Catholic background. So in our house, we have uh, traversed uh, a lot of denominations, and now we are not scared by any denomination. We, are, we don't judge any. We, know we are believers in Christ, and as long as somebody believes in Christ, we are brothers and sisters. And that's how we come to be very good friends with uh, Bishop Ruere, because uh, they have done a lot of work in our lives, in our offices. Let me back up a bit, then I'll come to the point of Bishop Rede. So I uh, went to school time of Amin. So I realized most people here, they just heard about Amin, no, we are not born. So I'm, I'm an elder here, not an elder of a church, but elder <laughs> chronologically. Because I saw Amin, I, uh, I experienced him. So now during Amin, after I left uh, my primary school in Eastern Uganda, I had to come to school here in Central. Of course, the best school in the country, high school. But we'll not go down that road. So from near Bali, which are where I hear you, some of you were, to come to Kampala, we would leave at 6 and get to Kampala at 6 p.m. Because, uh, no, 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 come at the beginning of the time. It was a boarding school. So because they were like, <laughs> yes, it was, it was close there, we were coming every time to report to school. And it would take us from six to six, 12 hours, because the roads were terrible. There were roadblocks, soldiers, searching everything. Now, a few times, so 6 p.m. was also curfew time. Once you got in the city, you could not go anywhere. So a number of times, actually, me, I spent nights at Central Police Station with other students. Once you go to the city and uh, there was a curfew, the only place we would go was at a police station and surrender yourself until the next morning. One of those times, I, uh, when we were going to school, I was a bit tall and lanky, and uh, the soldier picked on me. He said, uh, well, when you are doing that's Swahili for enemy. You must be an enemy. So he said, let the others go, you stay behind. And uh, so I realized you cannot argue with a man with a gun, so I stayed. And he told the others to go the bus. And uh, the, game, the games master, we are coming from a game, said, no, but I cannot leave my student and all. They said, go, so they pointed the gun. I, I, I actually have looked the gun in, uh, yeah. in its face. <laughs> Very scary moment. But just to tell you that we went through a very, very difficult time. At that time, I mean, it's time people being killed and so on. And the roads very bad. Roadblocks, the soldiers running rampage. The Lord took us through that time. And eventually, we finished, we, when I was coming to university, there was a, another leader called Tito Kelo before the current president came in. I think that was even more chaotic than, uh, than I mean, some of you remember. So at about 11, shooting would begin in the city and everybody had to run home because they could rob you. So one day I was coming from my high school to get my testimonials and everything. And they, we found the soldiers, they said, everybody out, empty your pockets, everything on the floor, they wanted money. And after that, just 11 in the morning, complete chaos in the city. Again, a close shave with, uh, with soldiers. 
I'm bringing you this because I needed to give you a perspective of where we have come from as a country. Almost hopeless. Most people are leaving Makerere University, which was the only university, and going out of the country. Greener pastures and so on. Wow. So in uh, 1990, when I finished school, university, I remember they advertised uh, 50 jobs in the Attorney General Chambers. And we were about 50 coming from sitting our bar exam. But only 10 of us applied for those jobs. Other people, government was not paying well. They were paying us 30,000 shillings. That is the equivalent of $10. So nobody wanted that, but of course, me, I had no connections. I knew less than $10, yeah. I needed somewhere to start from. So only those of us who were desperate wanted to work for the government. <laughs> so they took all of us, 10, uh, and uh, there were 40 workers that still left. We worked through, uh, I had to go to the US, some kind of diversion. Anyway, I had gotten interested in a young girl, and uh, then she was going to America to study, and my church told me, in the law, there is something called hot pursuit, that you need to do hot pursuit. <laughs> so I then rest a bit and went to America, got married. But uh, still, uh, my, my mission was here at both of us. So after a few years, we came back. As a matter of fact, uh, we met a couple. It, it is a small state called Iowa. It is agriculture in the Middle East, in Middle East near Chicago. Yeah. So we found a couple who had been uh, 25 years in Nigeria, in Jos, uh, a doctor, and so they said, ah, you are our brothers, we are also just new to the US. This, uh, so they took care of us and uh, we, we fellowshiped together. But at, at the end of three years we came back, because we felt the ministry was here, the mission, uh, everything has been done in America, there are so many people doing things, so, but here we needed money power and uh, thankfully we came back and I went back to the ministry and uh, they said, no, 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 the job is here, please do. Long story short, the Solicitor General, who is the head of uh, administration in, uh, in Attorney General's chamber, said uh, we need to send somebody to president's office because the president needs a lawyer from government and I'm going to send you. So I told him I cannot do that because uh, I had heard about the president, very brilliant person and uh, very particular, and I was not ready to deal with something like that. I was not sure about my law. <laughs> so I was not ready to be put on the spotlight. But uh, I remember the Solicitor General said, but aren't you born again? Why do you give me an answer before you pray about it? First go and pray about it. <laughs> I, I felt rebuked, so I went and prayed about it. And, uh, long story short, I went and uh, served the president as a legal secretary, doing a lot of things. But uh, after seven years, I, I left and uh, came back to the Attorney General's chambers. Now, when you have worked with the president and done things, and you come back into the civil service, it, it is a bit difficult because at the office of the president, you are action-packed, you are result-oriented. You, <laughs> They tell you this is your assignment, you come back with the results. Now in the civil service, one of the things was, uh, we could call whoever had the answer, but now in the civil service, you could not call somebody who was above your grade in another place. So I had worked with this minister, and I knew he had the answer to our problem. So I bought a phone and called him, and uh, he gave me the answer, but then my bosses heard that I had. The junior officer had called the minister. <laughs> so things like that, and there was tension. I decided I think it was time to leave. So when I was about to leave the service, I wanted to go into private legal practice. At that time, we had a number of people, Allen, Jennifer, they were working at Uganda Revenue Authority, born again people, and they invited me and said, no, we need a, a lawyer. I went and worked with them. Very, very good work. I've never felt so good about working in a place like I did at uh, Uganda Revenue Authority. The leader born again, board secretary born again, almost the whole top management. People doing the right things, transforming the revenue collection and uh, breaking all the targets and the records. 
But uh, everything good and bad comes to an end. So one day I get a call and they say, please pick up your letter from here at Judicial Service Commission. And uh, I, anyway, long story short, I was appointed a judge in 2010. I hadn't applied and uh, I was feeling a bit being a judge is for old people ready to retire and die from there. I felt young and I didn't think. But anyway, eventually I accepted the appointment and I became a high court judge. Wow. So this is something I never planned, but just know that I'd given my life to the Lord. 